process for interpreting two sample estimates is going to be a little bit different than our process for one sample estimates. The short version of all this is what we're going to be interested in is zero. If zero is in our interval, less than our interval, or greater than our interval. So the interval we construct for a two sample estimate for proportions is estimating the difference of P1 minus P2. So the population proportion from the first sample minus the population proportion from the second sample. When we consider P1 minus P2, we have three different possibilities to consider. So assuming we knew what these actual values are, then P1 minus P2 might be exactly equal to zero. And that's going to be the case if P1 and P2 are exactly the same. We could also have a scenario where P1 minus P2 is something greater than zero. So we get a positive result. That would mean that P1 has to be larger than P2. Or when we subtract those two numbers, we might get something less than zero. We might get a negative number. That would happen if P1 is smaller than P2. So this is going to become the basis for how we interpret these different confidence intervals, these three different results. With each two sample interval, we're going to take that interval and compare it to zero. If zero is in our confidence interval, then we have to conclude that P1 equals P2. So that would be the same thing as being able to identify that our confidence interval has both positive and negative values. So it doesn't matter where zero is in the interval, if it's at the high end, the low end, somewhere in the middle, any number in our confidence interval is a likely value for the difference of those two parameters. So in that case, if zero is in our interval, there's the possibility that the two are equal, so we have to conclude those are equal. If zero is less than our confidence interval, then we conclude that P1 is greater than P2. Or another way to identify this is if our confidence interval is strictly positive. So if all the numbers in our confidence interval are positive, we can assume that first value is the larger of the two since we're taking their difference and conclude that P1 is the larger proportion. And if zero is less than our confidence interval, then we conclude that P1 is less than P2. Or another way to identify that, again, would be that if our confidence interval is strictly negative. So if all the values in our confidence interval are negative, then all of our likely values for the difference of these two parameters comes out to be a negative value, meaning P1 has to be the smaller of those two values. So in each case, we're comparing that two sample confidence interval to zero.